You're listening to the Reed Fletcher podcast. Today was an awesome episode uh, with Jason Hewlett. He is an MC, professional corporate MC. He's traveled all over the world and done events in front of thousands. Um, you know, at the MGM Grand, he talks about that. He does impressions, comedy. Um, he's a really awesome guest, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Reed. Hey, you- Jason. How's it going? Good. How you doing, man? Good, good. Oh, that is high quality video. Awesome. Yeah. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you too. Um, I can tell that you uh, you're a pro when it comes to online presentation, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Just because of how cool this looks, or what? Yeah, I mean, I do zooms, you know, all day for work, and you don't ever see someone. So, do you have like a professional camera? Yeah. So this that you're on right now is a, a G5 GH5 Lumix. Are you a, are you like an audio guy? um like guy yeah kind of i mean i just i use just the oh yeah the blue yeah yeah uh-huh well the yeti yeah so let, let me uh let me switch over and show you what i've got working here sure so you can so you can see it so here's my gopro i'm on now oh uh, cool this is my setup watching you oh, so my gosh. this is the camera that's called the lumix gh5 uh-huh this is good a camera as you can get on the market i'm also shooting on this panasonic that's a um it's a really nice camera mm-hmm. and that is this very close-up angle <laughs> and this is the the lumix so you can see the quality is way different on the lumix but the yeah. panasonic's nice but then this gopro just allows me to switch or uh to show you so that's how i'm switching everything it's called a atem switcher and uh yeah so it's pretty snazzy does it switch automatically like when you look at a camera or how does it work no like i just have to press this button and then i'm up here oh i see (laughs) (laughs) so and then i've got that mic just in case that's my just in case backup mic that's how Uh crazy this has gotten because i am relying on this sennheiser Uh uh-huh which is a really really high-end mic so anyway that's my space oh actually i've got a cool thing i just set up yesterday i just set up my piano as well oh right that's next cool to me. yeah so i could even switch up the shots to show just my hands and stuff you know wow but, did you set anyway, this up yourself did you hire someone i set all of this up myself yesterday i set this up yesterday myself because i was putting these tiles on the ceiling and those uh, soundproof tiling uh-huh. to allow for better sound. But um, I had a guy come here and help me for about two months, um, mm-hmm. right at the beginning of this pandemic. And he is a genius and a quirky IT psycho man. And we just fought and fought and fought until we figured it out. Yeah. And everything <laughs> here, I think there's only four things that are new. Everything else I already had. So even all these cameras and stuff. Wow. That is an amazing setup. I, I think it is so cool to see the way that people have pivoted so quickly and so effectively um, with the pandemic. Yeah. It's, this has been tragic for my business, obviously, because I am a speaker performer for large events, but I mean, what are you going to (laughs) do? So I'm just doing my best. And luckily I had plenty of equipment like video and sound and a keyboard and stuff that I was like, can I present it in a way that people could still receive a show? So yeah. that's what I've been working on. And yeah, I had a, I had a very techie dude come and try to fix it and figure it out. And let me show you what happened when we, uh, when we were getting it all set up, we were trying to do it on that computer there and it's Uh just a mac you know i've got mac everywhere mac 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 and i finally blew up the mac trying out a gig and so he built a pc tower right here um that's like a third three thousand dollar pc tower so that's new that's new that's new and that's new. They're all, they're, this is the same thing, this and this, so that I can do seven cameras. But that's all that's new in this whole place. It's pretty insane, you know? Yeah, no, that's crazy. Um, I, I think that that is so awesome. I'm looking at, 
you know, I see a lot of the, the people that were doing events, MCs, or just like big time speakers like Tony Robbins or Dean Graziosi, um, they're having to, to do that same thing. All of a sudden they go from talking to a stadium full of people to, you know, I'm here in my living room, you know, it's the best, yeah. best we can do. I know. And you know, um, the people that aren't transitioning over and are saying, well, just wait till whatever. I'm like, dude, you, you got to go now. Like, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. I have friends, peers, full-time speakers that are like, I'll just wait. And I'm like, for what? You got to go. Yeah. It's right now. Like there is no other now. This is it. Yeah. And they're like, no, oh, just wait. I'm like, do you have like an unlimited amount of money? <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, how did you how did you get started in uh, in speaking? So, so I guess before I ask that, what is technically your 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 job? <laughs> <laughs> My job technically is to bring joy to the world. I feel as a performer, a speaker, a motivator, somebody who can inspire others. So. I mean, I just, I just use every talent that God gave me and I call it a signature move. And I just say, you have your signature moves. I have mine. And how do we utilize them? So I, that's what I do. If people want to uh, label it, I am a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. I am an, a family friendly entertainer. I'm an MC and host for large events around the world that are no longer happening as gatherings. So now I'm a virtual guy doing all this. Well, Is just to throw a, a plug in there. I have seen you both live in a, in front of a massive audience in Las Vegas, and I've seen you virtual um, in front of a massive virtual audience. Um, so if any of the listeners are looking for someone to do one of the two, they were both awesome, uh, funny, family friendly, wholesome. Um, but then that's not to to make you think that there's not a lot of like really good, valuable business content on top of that. And I, and I like that. Um, like a lot of impressions and music, but then also like a serious side. So that's kind of the plug. I've seen you now twice, so that's probably ten hours of <laughs> of events. <Wow. laughs> yeah, and I, and I really enjoyed it. That's why I wanted to have you on because I I felt like you were really dynamic, um, and and kind of a kind of a unique skill set. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> interesting time to to be someone like you. You know. Well, you know, and, and for anybody watching or listening there, this is a perfect time to be who you are and to be fully who you are and to actually grab every arrow from the quiver and try to utilize it. I mean, whether that's, you know, in, in my world, trying to do music and comedy and impressions or uh, trying to take people deep and serious. I mean, Reed, it's been fascinating that people are like, hey, we just want you on a call for 15 minutes to make us laugh, you know? And I'm like, what, you want me to do this? You know? And so I'm like, I guess I'll do something that'll make them laugh. And that's cool. And then they go, Oh, by the way, we also need a, a motivational message. Can you do that? And I'm like, sure. Why not? Let's tell a story. Let's do something to engage them. And so anybody that's listening and watching this, I hope that they're thinking to themselves, my goodness, I, I do have more that I can offer. And am I using it every day or am I just kind of sitting around and waiting for something to change? It's not going to change, I don't think. I mean, I think we're kind of stuck here. And that's okay to be stuck in a place which is either our home or our office or wherever. And what can we still deliver through this little square? Mm -hmm. You know, it's our voice. It's our, it's our talents. It's our gifts. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, makes you think maybe when we get back to normal, when there's events, if that does happen. Um, it's not to say that the skill set, the setup, the audience, the clients that you've gotten now by not waiting, I mean, now you have the opportunity to, you have an in-home studio. So it's like, you know, I see people that take advantage of the opportunity. Um, I feel like there's never really like a reason not to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're, you're right. And you know, like if you think about what I've done as a career for a long time. Um, let me show you what I'm used to. Are, are you ready for this? This is what yeah. I'm used to coming out on screen. And now here I am. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. 
at Big my house. house. <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm here at my house with no one to cheer for me, no one to give me that kind of love as you get in front of all those types of people. Yeah. And, but here's the thing, that is neat. And, and I'm grateful for it. I've been doing that for 20 years on large stages. I'm very comfortable on stage in front of thousands of people. But I'm, I really enjoy this. This is one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's yeah. just you and me. And, and I, I really like that because it is a 100% shift from before. Mm -hmm. And so now we can have a deeper conversation. But, you know, like as you, as you see these videos of me, like being on a huge stage where you've seen me before and people applauding and standing ovations and excited people, etc. I mean, I love doing this, performing stuff, but I always wanted to figure out how can I create something where I am at my house and I can teach from my house. And so in a pandemic, although I miss the big crowds and I miss the standing ovations, I miss the people laughing and the interaction, I'm telling you, this is what I always dreamed of doing, was figuring out how can I be home? How can I make a living from here and still inspire, entertain, make people smile? It works. It yeah, works. Absolutely. Did you always think that you would end up in the um, public speaking space? Or did you maybe think comedy at first? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I mean, when I got started back in 99, 2000, I, I thought my first goal was I want to be on the Las Vegas Strip. I want to have my own show there. Okay. And then I wanted to eventually move from that and graduate. In my opinion, graduation from the Strip mm -hmm. and having my own showroom would be to be a motivational speaker, author, and create kind of the Tony Robbins experience, if you will. And yeah. so that was sort of the progression I always wanted for myself. And I knew I had to do something significant enough as headlining in Las Vegas to warrant being a motivator or inspirational speaker and having a real story to tell. Mm -hmm. and, and funny enough, you know, the story became more about me getting the Las Vegas show and then turning it away, which has now kind of become my message of the promise. And so, yeah, it's like, that's where I first saw myself, even though I had other people like, I think you should be a comedian. I think you could be a recording artist. I mm -hmm. think you should go work for the fair because you're so <laughs> bizarre. You can do all these things. And so, you know, I didn't know where it was going to go, but I'm grateful for where it is. So, so wait, what happened with the, with the show? What's that story? Oh, so in uh, 2004, I had, I had been working for three or four years full time as an entertainer, performer, did a family friendly show that was killing it all over the, the world, really. And I was doing corporate events and just raising my fee. And I was climbing the ladder quick in my early 20s. And I was offered uh, multiple casino offers. And uh, we whittled them down to the one that we were really after. And then as we're being offered the offer that would change my life and my wife, it was just the two of us back then, uh, we realized that they wanted to manage my career, change my act, tell me what to perform. It was right after the family-friendly Vegas attempt of the 90s and shifting into the early 2000s, which was what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas was the new theme. And so all of a sudden they wanted to change family friendly entertainer guy with a mission to spread joy to something that they needed for their audience. And they said, you have to do what we say this way for your career to work here. And well, I, I never did a show there. <laughs> so that becomes, I guess, my story, you know, that I turned away Vegas in order to keep a promise to myself and my legacy and that's, uh, that's why a lot of listeners or viewers of yours, I'm sure, have never heard of me before. But that's, uh, that's why you've seen me in the settings you've seen me in the corporation space. Yeah, no. I, and I mean, I feel like, obviously, I don't know um, exactly the types of shows, maybe at the beginning of your career that you envisioned doing. Maybe it's exactly what you are doing. But the show that I saw was, was awesome. I've seen it twice. Um, I, I, w I was thinking a little bit about it. Uh, with with what you do, um, is it and this far in your career? Like, how do you get yourself to bring that 
energy, that authenticity to something that, you know, requires so much out of you. You know, you've been doing it for so long. How do you escape like getting complacent with something like that? Yeah, that's a cool question. I mean, really it's, it's each time the lights go on, you perform. Sammy Davis Jr. said it best. He goes, you know, even if I just did six hours on stage, when I get home, I open the fridge and the light comes on and I do 10 minutes for the food. You know, like the lights come on and you do the show. And so that's how I've always felt about it. It's like the great honor of my, my life is to have an audience that can sit back and reflect, can think, can laugh, can escape for a minute. And even now, as I'm utilizing the performing and the music, comedy, all of those things, and we can, you know, we can show your viewers some of that. But I'm just saying, like, once you get their heart open, then all of a sudden that allows their head to embrace some of the teaching principles. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, with every engagement, that for me is what I was born to do. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's not hard to get up for something that you're supposed to do in your in your calling in life. And so that's what I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I know there are some performers that are like, oh, I got to play my hit song again. What the heck? And they're just so sick of it. I mean, I get it. You're touring, you're tired, etc. But man, what a gift that an audience would arrive and listen and care and want your stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I view it. Are you as extroverted as people think? No, no, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm, look at this. This is, uh, you see all these books here, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I mean I've, got, I've got journals, journals that are just full to the brim of, of what, this is what I'd rather be doing. I'd rather be writing all day. I'd rather be reading or. You have a book out, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a book, yeah. Uh, let's see, I do have it here. Um, it's called The Promise to the One. And it's, yeah, man, it's, it's brand new. In fact, it, launch, it launches in August, mid-August. Oh, awesome. And, uh, well, there it is. That's what the hard or the soft cover looks like. Oh, cool. And it, it's just, it came out in, uh, during the pandemic, came out as an ebook. But The Promise to the One is the beginning of a series of promise books I'll be writing the promise to the family, promise to your client, promise to, you know, whatever it comes to. But I'm just, I'm very excited about that. So yeah. Good. when you ask, are you as extroverted? Hey man, I'm as extroverted as I have to be to do my job really well. And then I go into an extreme introversion, which is more of a, I would say like a uh, introspection or, you know, assimilation of figuring out what you did right and well and how you can do better next time. And I don't, I don't like the label so much of introvert, extrovert, et cetera. I think we choose what we become. Sure. And so I, I've been working at both for a long time. Yeah, I, I found, and I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm overthinking this, but I found a lot of times people that are very skilled and comfortable in front of large audiences, um, they, it, people assume about them that they always want to be surrounded by people. Um, but at least in my experience, I mean, it's, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, it's not that they don't like people, but they're just like anyone else. You know, they like alone time. They, you know, they, they get shy. And like, is there something about your personality you feel like people would be surprised by since they only see you on stage? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so take my friend circle, for example, with my wife and I, as you know, as a couple, we have, friends and uh -huh. they're always stunned to meet us in the sense of they saw me on a stage probably somewhere think mm -hmm. he'd be a cool guy to get to know and then they get to know me in that setting of just a small group of couples and I am I am almost dead silent I am uh, my wife leads she's in charge of that and I prefer to just kind of sit back I'll make my comments but I I prefer this one-on-one -on -one like you and me right now. Yeah. I mean, I'll go in the other, I'll go in the corner and go have a one-on-one -on -one with one of the, you know, one of the dads or the, the guys. And we just talk about life. And that's what I prefer. And so uh -huh. people are shocked to think that I'm not like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm like dancing and doing like, hey, I, 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 you know, doing impressions. They're like, where, where did that guy go from the stage? And it's like, yeah. hey, 
I'm kind of calm off stage pretty much. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I imagine keeping up that energy all the time that you have on stage would be crazy. I used to try. I mean, I really did. I, I knew that that was part of the shtick and I worked very hard at it. And eventually I just embraced that it wasn't natural and that it was okay to be who I am when I'm on stage, which is an amplified 11. And when mm -hmm. I'm off stage, I'm still who I am, but I'm not like, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. too much. It's too intense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Is there ever a time that you were nervous? Like the beginning of your career, have you ever had struggled fear of public speaking? You know, not not as a performer. Um, when I when I started, I was a impersonator in Las Vegas as um, Ricky Martin and Elton John, and so okay. I was doing both those characters in a show called Legends in Concert. And we toured around to different states, like Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, and then South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, and just kind of went all around and did this show of impressions and impersonations, and so. When the first time I was going out on stage, I had this huge new job and I was young. And I remember one of the Blues Brothers impersonators looked over at me and he goes, hey, and he called me Ricky because Ricky Martin was my first character. He's like, hey, Ricky, are you scared? It's your first show. And I was like, dude, I've been waiting for this my whole life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I went out there and I, I was a total spaz. And they filmed me and they're like, let's watch this so we can get you doing this impersonation well. <laughs> and, uh, I was very not nervous at all. Huh. And I think through the years, I've become more nervous. Interesting. And, yeah, I don't know what that means. Maybe it means I, maybe it means I'm less sure of myself. Maybe it means <laughs> I question more about what I'm doing, you know. It was almost like I was just jumping out of an airplane with no parachute. Like, did you pack it for me? Ah! You know? So, yeah. <laughs> a little different now. Now you have more of a perspective. Like, wait, I actually could screw this up. Maybe. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, even doing a Zoom, uh, you know, this is like really freaky. For a guy like me who's used to going out on a big stage where all these great audiovisual technical people are standing by with headsets and microphones ready to fix every problem I'm going to have. All I have to do is show up. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm all of those guys trying to make sure the zoom call goes well. Yeah. That's where I get nervous. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. I've run into that myself with a podcast. Um, <laughs> do you have a, an event you can think of that was like, you know, was really impactful or like was a bigger audience than you'd ever had before? Or like you have one that kind of stands out, anything like that? Well, I mean, there have been so many cool ones. Uh, I know that, I know that there have been really small ones that impacted me and then huge ones where I was like, this is, this is it. I, I think probably about 2012 is when I made a real big shift in my mind and due to vocal issues that I was having from, hurting my voice because I was doing voices from uh, Led Zeppelin and screaming like Guns N' Roses to Metallica and, and Bruce Springsteen to very nice voices like uh, Nat King Cole or Frankie Valli, some of the classics of old school. And I was just ripping my vocal cords apart. And I knew I'm probably slowly uh, retiring pieces of my career. And mm -hmm. I did a show at the MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas for 10,000 people at a convention, you know, where they do all the, the boxing matches and all the pay-per-view stuff that was in this big arena there. And uh, huge concerts have been there from, you know, Madonna to Prince to whomever. And, and so I was so excited for this. I had my full band, which I didn't, I bet you didn't see me with the band. No. No, I, I use an iPod track usually. And, and so I had a full band. I had a full costumes. I mean, I was switching in and out of costumes and, and 10,000 people freaking out. And they were multi-level marketing distributors. I mean, come on, that's the best audience you can get. These are people yeah. that are just like, buy my stuff, I believe, you know? And so I come out on stage and they're like, he's awesome, even if I'm not. They're just like, yeah. And <laughs> that was the best show I think I ever had. And uh, that was for a company called Shackley. And uh, I still watch the videos of it and just go, wow, that was like another 
another world for me for an hour plus I did all my impressions and then a really read i think that was kind of the beginning of the end of my performing only career and that's when i was like you know i think i can go to this level of also inspiring and yeah. writing and yeah. motivating with the entertainment and then cutting out the pieces of the entertainment that hurt my body like i used to do jim carrey where i would be, hey everybody <laughs> you know let me tell you something and I would fall on the floor and hurt my neck. And I was hurting my voice with voices I shouldn't be doing. And, uh, you know, by, by about the age of 35, they were saying, the doctors were saying, you're wearing out your voice. It'll be gone soon. That's your gift. So don't, don't ruin it. So I had to slowly cut back little pieces of my act and uh, replace it with stories or speaking. And that's been a big shift. Do you think it's heading even more that way for the next chapter of your career? I would, I would believe so. I probably in a Zoom call like this, when a company hires me now to come on and inspire, entertain and make them engaged and so forth. You know, it used to be an hour on a stage. Now they're like, can you do 35 minutes and still be effective? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm only doing maybe, maybe five or six voices in that presentation. I mean, songs that's pretty significantly low for me you know mm -hmm. i mean let me just let me just play one for yeah the audience so they're like what is he talking about that he does you know yeah. like uh, may, your audience probably too young to remember louis armstrong but i would sing like him like this i see friends shaking hands saying how do you do do boo -boo do they're really insane Oh yes, I love you, I hear babies cry, do do be do, I watch them grow, <laughs> they learn much more, yes, than I ever know, and I think to myself, boo do boo boo do do, what a wonderful world, oh yes, bye bye do boo do da da, you know what I mean? I mean, that it's is fun, spot on. It's like, oh, it's like, what man. are you doing to your voice? What are you doing to your voice? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love that. What What do you think is the one that you're the best at? Is it that one? That, like, you're the most accurate? Oh, I mean. I like the Jim Carrey. I, I, <laughs> I really don't know how close I am to any of them, to be candid. <laughs> if, if this were simply radio, uh, there is nobody I could do that you would be like, that sounds spot on. I'm just not that good at it. What I am good at though, is visually, I can make you believe for a moment that it's a really good caricaturization. That's what I'm good at. Well, yeah, it's like- so a, I write it, it on the radio. Uh-huh. Yeah. It reminds you of the person the with the eyes, the, the eyes and the, the face. And um, the one that you did in Las Vegas when I saw you was, uh, uh, what is it? ROA Speedwagon? Oh, REO Speedwagon. Yeah. REO Speedwagon. Okay. okay. Did you like that voice? Did oh, I with it? the hard R kind of at the end of words. Okay. I remember that. Or the, I remember open arms. You talk about broken arms. Um, Good I'm memory. Trying, I remember some of them. What event them. was this? What, what was it? Are you at will to say? Can you say? Um, yeah, it was uh, 2015 in Las Vegas for Zingular. I 2015. Oh, for Zingular. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. I love Zingular. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, um, those voices, for example, I, I had, um, if I'm good at voices, I've been told by the right people that I nailed them. For example, I was in Detroit doing a Christmas party years ago, mm -hmm. and I went into the REO Speedwagon piece, and I did the whole... And I can't fight this feeling anymore. I forgot what I started fighting for. <laughs> you know, with the hard R that you remember. Uh -huh. and, I mean, really, it's just pure satire. It's a parody. I'm, mm -hmm. I am poking fun, although I love that group. And after the gig, I went up to the sound guys and I said, hey, you guys did awesome. Thank you very much. You know, clap for them. And then the sound guy goes, Hey, 
I was Ario Speedwagon's stage manager for 30 years. And I was like, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, what do you think I thought when you started that song? And I was like, oh man, I am sorry, you know? And he, he goes, no, dude, you crush that impression. That is one of the best voices I've ever heard anyone do. And he <laughs> said, in fact, I recorded it and sent it to my wife. And this is her response. And it was all very explicit because she was freaking out how good it was. So if you're asking well, <laughs> what voices have I nailed, it's only when the stage manager of 30 years goes, dude, you got that one. You know? That is awesome. I am actually really interested in impressionists. I, um, I watch uh, like Frank Caliendo on YouTube. You ever watched him? Or dude, Frank is a beast. He is oh, so great. man. Or um, I think his name is Jay Farrell, who does like Denzel. And oh, Jay's brilliant. Yeah, these are good guys. Um, One you might really enjoy is a friend of mine. His name is John D. Domenico. And okay. he's the guy that does all the Trump uh, impressions that you've probably seen lately online. He's been on Howard Stern for the last month. And he dresses up like him with the ruined, uh, you know, tan self-tanner and his hair and the whole deal. But he's done... Dr. Evil and Austin Powers and Dr. Phil and, and I mean, Guy Fieri, he is brilliant. <laughs> and you would get a kick out of him. John D. Domenico, check him out. I think he's like viral on TikTok now and, and everywhere because of his Trump thing. So you'd get a kick, but yeah, Caliendo, Farrell. Uh, there's a, there's a guy in Las Vegas, Gordy Brown, who's one of the greats, a guy that I really looked up to. His name was Danny Gans. He uh -huh. died, uh, uh, 11 years ago and so he was one of my heroes but he went way too young but that guy man every voice he did you'd be like are you kidding me you know it was one of those things <laughs> yeah i uh i heard jamie fox the other day doing uh mike tyson because oh. they're they're coming out with a movie and i guess he's playing and he did ray charles and was so amazing as ray charles and you hear him you know and there's one, there's like, there's a fine line and I, I'm not an impressionist. So I have, always, obviously this is just kind of like armchair observation, but it seems like there's a fine line between um, someone who's really good at the impression and is also an entertainer like you, where you're like, well, this is, I want to sound like them, but I also, it's funny and like, it's relatable because, oh yeah, he does move his head like that. He closes his eyes, you know, and he does the hard R. And then there's like the Frank Caliendo where they are like, you can't tell that it's not them. You know, it's maybe yeah. less entertaining just for entertainment, but it's like, it's almost like, wait, what? Say that again. That sounded exactly like Morgan Freeman, you know? <laughs> yeah, his Morgan Freeman is freaky good. Uh, you know, and I, I used to, when I was younger, I was trying to go for spot on mm -hmm. and nail the voice. And eventually I realized that actually the audience thinks they know what the voice is better than what the real voice is. For example, um, I, re I remember I worked so hard to get Neil Young's voice down. You I don't know, know who that is. And Neil Young, uh, he sang a bunch of songs like, um, uh, like let's see. Um, I want to live, I want to give. I've been a miner for a heart of gold. <laughs> I've been in Hollywood, I've been in Redwood, you know, like, so I was working on this voice from the 60s and 70s that really mattered to me to like nail the voice. Uh -huh. And eventually I realized that if I played it more into this caricaturization, mm -hmm. just this over the top ridiculousness that they thought they remembered in his voice, that got a better response than me nailing the voice. Mm -hmm. And because I'm an entertainer, I'm like, I'm going for it. I'm going to, I'm going to do Bob Dylan. I, hey, Mr. Tambourine, man. I'm not sleepy. Oh, little play. I'm going to, you know, and everyone's like, <laughs> high fiving. And I'm like, dude, that is not even close to Bob Dylan. <laughs> Bob Dylan would not fun. be proud. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Bob would see it and be like, that's not how I sound. Come on, man. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Then there's Caliendo, who you, he nails every voice, and he's got the comedy chops. 
and he can and he just astounds you and that's what's really neat about a good impressionist they just you watch him you're like oh my gosh yeah i like can't his madden it. his madden just blows me away. i listen to it I'm like say that again I would try it, but I'm terrible at it, so I don't want to embarrass myself. But, yeah, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, yeah, his, his, er, 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 er. Yeah, he is, he's brilliant. And there are certain guys that can pull that off. And a guy like me, I, I am not going for the perfect impression. I'm going for the satirical parody that makes the audience go, oh, yeah, that's funny. Or I relate to that. Yeah. Like, that's why you remember Ario Speedwagon. It's not yeah. just because I do the voice well. It's because I take the ridiculousness of the way that he did his signature move. And the audience appreciates that. They're like, oh, that's how I sang it too with, when yeah. I hear it on the radio. Do you have something new you're working on? Do you have like a, a new impression people haven't seen? <laughs> you know, I've worked so hard to try to figure out how do you do some of these new artists? Because, I mean, it's like, who do you pick and how do I make my voice sound computerized enough to yeah. auto tune and fix it? Cause I don't know very many singers that are actually really singers that much as, as we would expect or hope. But you know, once in a while a lady Gaga shows up and you're like, Whoa, you know, she can really sing. Yeah. Um, but it, it, there's not really anybody right now that I've, uh, I've like worked in because here's the thing. I worked so hard at the beginning of my career to establish the good stuff. And I've just slowly built on top of it, stories, comedy, other things that it was like, I've just got this foundation of good characters that really work. Mm -hmm. And as I've tried to like, I've tried to bring in guys like Bruno Mars, or, you know, like, and I'm damn fuck won't give it to you, cause I'm damn fuck won't give it to you. You know, like I'll do, I'll do like a ridiculous Bruno Mars, like Bruno Mars duets with Chewbacca, you know, where he's like, Girl, you're amazing, just the way you, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But to me, it's like, how do you do it? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I just love the idea of Chewbacca ruining every great duet, you know, like <laughs> my endless love. <laughs> <laughs> it's only uh, funny to us man no anybody <laughs> else is like what am i listening to <laughs> oh no i think that is so funny um i i don't want to keep you too long it's like i've had you for about 40 minutes um people that are listening that want to support you what what can we do where can we get your book where can we follow you all that kind of stuff Dude, that's nice. Uh, um, I mean, the book's only right now on Amazon and, and uh, Barnes and Noble, where they could get it as an ebook only. Okay. And that's through July. And then come mid August, uh, the book, The Promise to the One, will be released as both an audiobook and the, uh, you know, the physical book that you can actually get in the mail. And so I'm very excited about that. If they wanted to get the promise, uh, the promise to the one is really this concept that I've been working on my entire career. And I do start with the story of the Las Vegas turning it away. And uh, so it's, it's a book about integrity. It's a, it's a book of stories that are very, very funny, very vulnerable. And, and equally, it'll make you reconsider your promise to yourself. That's what the one is. The one is you. What's your promise to yourself? It's to it's to share your gifts. It's to utilize your voice. And we've talked about impressions and, and, and these types of voices of others. And the reason we like someone who can do a good voice is because they're capturing the essence that makes that person unique. Mm -hmm. And every single person has something like that. So that's where I would be thrilled if your audience wanted to grab the, the promise to the one and either as an ebook now or a physical or audiobook later. And then uh, jasonhewlett.com. That's where my, my whole world is. It's like, you know, just it's a, it's a career of, of making people smile and considering their promise to, to the rest of the world. So jasonhewlett.com, that's the place. And eventually I'm putting together a, like a membership uh, site where mm -hmm. you can come on and see me doing uh, performances no one else gets to see. 
uh, downloading music that no one's ever going to hear anywhere else. Uh, lots of blogging and stories and so forth. So that'll be up soon. Awesome. Awesome. I know that you're a busy guy, so we'll let you go. But I just want to say anyone listening, he, you know, it is an awesome experience. It's fun. It's funny, like you've seen, but there's, I mean, legitimate, like it's motivational, it's inspirational, and it's instructional. So um, thanks for being on. If we can help you in any way, reach out to me and we should do this again. I really appreciate it. Reed, I'm, I'm impressed, man. I appreciate it. Thank you yeah. to you and your listeners. It's great. Good talking to you, Jason. Have a good one. Too.